look at how pretty this one came out. Horribly backlit, but you get the picture. Looking really good. Lots of flowers on there. It's still a little bit too sunny for me to move it over to where I want to keep it, so it's just kind of hanging out over here underneath the umbrella, getting, getting some shade, because I think it'll kind of scorch. There aren't any leaves on the trees. They, well, there aren't many leaves on the trees. Not enough to, like, provide much shade. It won't be long, though. I mean, really, just, like, a few days. Wow, there's a lot of dead branches I need to cut out of this magnolia. Before I get going with this vlog, I wanted to go ahead and just, I have a clip I need to insert, and you'll understand why I'm doing that now when you see it. So, here's that. So, I'm at a nursery, a new nursery to me. It's called Hillerman's. And I'm not going to have time to vlog here because we're getting ready to close, but I just, like, had to give a quick little look. Look at, they have so many, so many pretty things. All kinds of mangaves and just lots of, oh, I'm, I'm loving this place. We'll definitely come back another time and like have a thorough look around. <laughs> look, look at how big this staghorn is. Oh my gosh. Wow. That is an old plant. <laughs> how I'm going to fit this into the vlog? I have no idea just gonna be a random start this music is gonna get copyright and I gotta turn this off now yeah I didn't that doesn't really fit into the vlog I've been to a few nurseries this week so I'll do a little bit of a plant haul show you what I got but I didn't film much while I was at these different nurseries because I was I was with people so just a little bit awkward vlogging when you're like with friends and whatnot but I did pick up this awesome pot really really I mean this thing is gigantic this is a big big pot I have plans for this. I've wanted to do like some aquatic type planters for the last few years. But I haven't been able to find really big pots that were a good price. So this will do the trick for that. It's plastic, but I mean, considering how much it was, I'm totally fine with that. I think I'm going to do probably a lotus in this one. I think that'll look nice. I've wanted to get some lotus planted for a while. Hey, Tuck, how you doing, Tucker? It's a good boy. And I also picked up this really big shallow bowl. This was a fantastic price. It's 31 inches, so it's nice and big. I'm going to set this up as a fountain. I have another one back here that is just like something I toss together. I like to have a fountain out here running for the dogs that they can drink out of so that they don't drink it out of the pool because it's salt water and it's not good for them. I think this is going to be perfect because I need like this is that looks like garbage and that pump's broken and so that's why everything's kind of in shambles back here I'm waiting for some supplies to arrive so I got this really pretty canary wing begonia there's its label right there this is basically a dragon's wing begonia I've wanted one of these for years you can see they have a similar foliage I mean, pretty much identical foliage to a dragon's wing but it's a very nice light green chartreuse color and it should be able to be grown just the same as the dragon's wing because the foliage is a little bit more light, it can't take quite as much sun as a dragon's wing. But, like, morning sun, filtered afternoon shade should do just fine. And I'm, what I'm trying to show is there's a really pretty reddish-pink outline on the edges of the foliage, but it's very, very faint. Doesn't want to show up on camera. Okay, and then I also picked up some of these Saracenias here, these pitcher plants. Oh, I forgot to... Oh, over here. Let me show you this. I grabbed this also while I was at the nursery. It's just a little... I took... Hey, Tucker. It's a floater. You put them in your pond. It's basically just like a piece of styrofoam that has landscape fabric around it, something like that. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to plant this up with those carnivorous plants. And I like that it had this little loop on it because I can tie it off to something. And by having that on there, I can, uh, what was I saying? Well, I'll be able to tie it off so that it, so this doesn't drift underneath the waterfalls and whatnot. So I have that, which is why I grabbed these guys over here. They don't have names on them. Unfortunately, they're just like assorted pitcher plants, but I tried to get like a variety. This is a lot, four of those for this little guy over here. That's heavy, but it should be okay for this year. Next year might be a different story. And then some succulents. I grabbed a burrow's tail. I just released that video a few days ago with my other one, which I think is an El Barito, which just means it has like little nubby leaflets on it. I've wanted one of just the regular burrow's tails. It has these longer leaves, leaflets, I should say, for a very long time, but I just I haven't seen them. So I grabbed one of those. That's nice. I'm just going to like not touch it. And uh, another plant that has been very fickle and falling apart is this succulent right here. I don't know what kind it is. The label said pincushion or urchin, and I might just be thinking urchin because there's a type of urchin called a pincushion urchin, but it's nice. It has a lot of fun cascade to it, maybe some type of Senecio. I don't know. Put that down in the comments if you do know. 
And then the last thing, at least for over here, is this really nice, pretty, that's not better lighting at all, this Aeonium. And the Aeonium Arboreum, I can't remember the variety name, it doesn't have a label. You guys, if you've been around here for a minute, you know I don't really like to give names to things if they don't have labels, depending on what it is. I mean, like a tulip, you know, obviously. That's different. But I have a video I've been wanting to do where I have something like this coming out the middle. I'm going to put a whole bunch of succulents around it inside of a clamshell. So that'll probably be out in like a week or so, maybe two weeks. I think this will look nice in there. Okay, and then lastly, love this harsh lighting. I got a couple more of the Cordelin fruticosas. This is, well, actually I don't think these have variety names on them. Let me check. Let's see here. Try and clean this off and make it so that it's actually visible. Cordelin fruticosa Arlequin. That's this guy. Very pretty, a lighter foliage with lots of nice markings in it. Really pretty variegation. I have really grown fond of cordelins this year. I don't know what it is. They're not new. They've always been around, but just something about them this year is just really grabbing my attention. And this one is very, very big. I stuck it in just a tall pot so that it wouldn't blow over. Don't know if this one has a name. I'll check. No, no tag on that one. Maybe it's like the Red Sister, something like that. It's really pretty though. And very tall. I really like that one. And look at this false Aurelia. Isn't it gorgeous? This thing is gigantic. Especially for what it costs. This was only 39 bucks. Look at how tall it is. It goes all the way down to the ground and everything. Just like everything does with gravity. It's in a tiny little pot, so it does need to be repotted, but I'm, that's no big deal. I think this is going to end up over in my Serenity Garden area that I'll be, I'll be setting up back over here by that swing, by the glider. And actually, I should probably move that now because I feel like the sun over here is way too strong for this guy. Look at, look at how tiny that pot is. It's so little. Okay, <laughs> that's by no means permanent, but it's going to hold it upright throughout the next few weeks while I'm getting things taken care of over here. Hey, Duck. How you doing? I love the texture on these guys. Is the neighbor's hedge trimming, is that bothering anybody? Maybe I'll wait and come back to this. In the meantime, let's take a kitty break. Hi, Pumpkin. You have a good nap, baby girl? You get a nice nap. You're so sweet. Any kiss? Thanks. Oh, you're such a sweetheart. I can also grab my bucket here because I need to start getting things soaking. <laughs> this tank, I just clean it so there's water spots. I have pots that are potted aquatic plants I need to get put down into the soil there. You guys, high maintenance fresh water tank. It's not supposed to be, but the filter I have on here just absolutely sucks. It's a nice filter. It was for a salt water tank. I switched over to fresh water. I threw an emperor on the back to help out, which is making a big difference. Did I mention that this is going to be an extremely random vlog because I have like a million little bitty projects to do? Speaking of random, say hi to Colby. How you doing, bud? Oh, he's happy to be outside. You already ate all your pellets. That's good had a lot of trouble getting this one to eat pellets which isn't great it's a grassland tortoise and they shouldn't eat tons and tons of lettuce like that shouldn't be their exclusive diet you know variety is the best thing this is a picky picky eater i blend up all kinds of things so it kind of doesn't have a choice but to get some variety in his diet her diet but it she usually eats around it and just goes for the lettuce but i'm happy finally finally starting to go for pellets all right so what i've done here this is basically just peat with some sand, there's some charcoal in there, there's some chunky peat, a little bit of sagum. This is what I want to use for those pitcher plants for the Saracenias. It's actually a repti soil, and I use it for that cotton candy fern that I put into like a terrarium type setting not too long ago. And I noticed that it really, the way it holds moisture, perfect for carnivorous plants. Terrible for ferns, so I need to repot that, but it'll be great, I think, for these Saracenias. But it takes a really long time to absorb water, so I'm gonna go ahead, use some of this, because this is mostly rainwater, and let that soak for a little bit. And uh, I didn't bring like a cup or anything out here, so I'm just gonna very slowly put in just a little, just like that, let that soak and absorb for a while, and then I can add more later. But just so you know what I'm talking about, you see how it kinda turns into a big old chunk like this? That's why it takes a while to get it to absorb that water because it just sort of floats there which is pretty typical with peat that's kind of what it does with all that water went down below it i'll give it a little bit of a stir that doesn't typically help a ton but yeah okay like i just said i'm gonna let that soak and come back to it right so are you you gonna be in the shot toby you gonna be my helper 
All right, so it's actually the next day. It started to rain yesterday, and I got distracted and cut down a dead tree. It's a, a whole big thing. But what I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've removed most of the sagum that was around these roots. I'm just going to go ahead and plop these guys in here. I'm going to try and... To uh, what are, can I help you? What are you doing? It's not for you. Like I said, just digging out some little holes for these guys and plopping them in here. I don't want the crown which is the center point of the plant. Don't want that to be down below the soil surface, so I may need to actually lift this guy up just a smidge. I don't know what the dogs are like extra obsessed with me right now. Don't know what that's about. We go, that's number two. And I'm just loosely packing this peat back around there. I'm not putting it in very tight. Some of these guys were like barely rooted into that moss. That they're potted up in mostly pure sagum, and they're like, barely rooted in at all which is something that kind of frustrates me sometimes because like paid for the bigger more expensive plants but clearly the grower had probably very recently just bumped them up so i wish they wouldn't do that but is what it is still nice looking plants and this is the last one isn't it cute tiny little guy so i'm just gonna take this i'm gonna go ahead and start floating it in the pond if there aren't any fish in the pond yet. I mean, there are fish in the indoor pond, but well, you'll see. There we go. Just gonna let that do its thing. The fabric that this is made out of, that's permeable, so this will stay nice and moist, and they should be pretty happy in there, I think. I could have also thrown some sundews in there. I think that would have looked really cool, but for now, this is good. They should be all right. Like I mentioned, this will be overcrowded probably by the end of this growing season, but I don't think I'm gonna have to worry about that too terribly much because next year I'll be doing something different with them, moving them into something bigger. Separating them out, potentially setting up like their own little bog garden. And I may, not right now, but I may plop some creeping Jenny in here at some point just to kind of fill in around the edges. But I'm going to wait for these guys to get more established first because the creeping Jenny will choke them out. I don't want that to happen. So that would be like a few months from now. Ooh. Oh, the water is nice and warm. It was in the 80s yesterday. Today it's like 60 and pretty gross out. So Went ahead, finished this up, and I gotta go do some other fun things inside. Oh, so much pollen. I don't think it really shows that well on camera, but it's disgusting. This is actually an improvement. It was a lot worse yesterday. So it's cold, it's extremely windy, so I decided I was gonna go ahead and put that fountain together. I don't know why I'm put me pointing that direction doesn't help with anything at all. I was gonna put that fountain together, and um, it's just, I don't want to. It's too cold. So instead, what I'm going to do... That's not actually helping all that much. Let's see if that does anything. I gotta go to Lowe's. Because, you know, that's what I do. Actually, it's because uh, my pool net broke, so I need to get a new net. And then the person who works there told me they'd be getting new stuff in all the time. Hold on. Okay, that's a better view. So what I was saying is that the person who runs their garden department told me that they've been getting in like a ton of things so hopefully they'll have a lot of fun stuff to look at that we haven't already seen in the vlogs look how pretty the trees are also the japanese maple back there pretty sure she's dead yeah last spring or i guess like midsummer, that japanese maple really started to go downhill it was losing a bunch of leaves it was like half alive by fall time and actually had an arborist come out and look at it just like get their opinion on what to do and they said it was probably either like some type of versillum rot or maybe the roots got wrapped up and tangled and the tree had started to choke itself over time. You know, that can happen. So it was just kind of a waiting game. We were like, let's wait and see what happens in the springtime. Maybe it'll flush out with lots of new growth or maybe it'll die. And by now, it really should have been popping open. A lot of the branches are very brittle, like they'll just snap right in your hands. Which, you know, that's not what they're supposed to do. So, gonna give it like another week or so and see what happens, but ultimately I'm pretty sure that tree is gonna have to come out. Which sucks, because that is a gorgeous Japanese maple. It's very old. It's, um, I believe it's a blood good, I think is the variety on that one. Which is a pretty fast growing Japanese maple, so could always replace it. That wasn't the best spot for it, though, to be honest. Like, it's always been way too big to have planted that close to the house, so. Maybe it's like kind of, it's probably going to look better, honestly, to have it gone, but it was such a pretty tree. But hey, that's a big spot that can be replanted now. 
So that's nice, because they're on like a crepe myrtle or just a like actual dwarf. Japanese maple might look nice there. Who knows? I have time to figure that one out. The tree hasn't even been dug out yet. So anyways, yes, going to Lowe's. Need to get a pool brush and check out some of the new plants. Yeah, she's been here for like 10 minutes, not even joking. 50 Cent came on the radio and it reminded me that it's like two, yes, two different people's birthdays. So I was texting and sending them snaps and that was a fail. Me seeing it and, and sending people snaps and then noticing the person parked next to me is like laughing their ass off at me. That's fine. You go ahead and laugh. Glad I made your day better. Look how pretty the crab apples are. It is extremely windy, so this might be an epic fail. People give me all kinds of looks today. Like, what, you've never seen someone take pictures of a beautiful tree? Sorry, just busy living my best life. This is cute. Prices, not, but it's cute. Oh my gosh, are the blood goods normally this expensive? I thought they were like one of the cheap Japanese maples. Now I'm like really bummed about someone in my yard being dead. What a beautiful petunia. More purple in person than it's showing up on camera. But that is just gorgeous. I don't think it's supposed to look like that though because the others don't really, well maybe it is. I don't know, maybe they just fade out to a pretty color. I would have a lot of like pre-made baskets and arrangements that look really nice. I have a bad habit of like rushing past everything that's outside and going inside and then I'm checking out I'm like, wait, I forgot to look at what's outside. So just... Alright, this is what I need. Man, this is little. The one I had that broke was like 24 inches wide. It's going to take forever to clean the pool of this thing. It's a good price though. It's only like what does that say? $9? Hmm. Is there anything bigger? I gotta look. Oh, yeah, I think this is what I want anyways. This one has rubber bristles on it, which would be fine, but that's more for, like, kind of scrubbing. I just need to be able to sweep, like, that shot of my knee. Just to be able to sweep stuff towards the bottom. So this is probably the better way to go, the 18-incher. Sometimes size matters. Okay, so I've actually been here for a while, and it's just noisy. I can't avoid it, so we're just, just going to accept it, right? Look at these marigolds, the proud Mary. Mary, Mary oh, Mary, like Marigold. I get it. Strong garden performance. Bold blooms and sturdy stems hold up to handling in varying weather. Handles heat. So, isn't that just like a marigold? I guess not, right? I mean, I know that marigolds, they sometimes suffer a lot when things get really hot and wet, so I guess that's cool. The color is yellow, but it's not... Would you focus? There we go. It's not like the canary yellow, though it looks like it on camera. Like, it actually has sort of a hint of green, but again, on my viewfinder, come on. What's with the focusing today? Every day. It's time to get a new camera, guys. This thing's been driving me crazy. Yeah, okay. Anyways, in person, it looks more of a yellow-green than bright, bright yellow. Oh, look at all the happy, happy Gerber daisies. Of course, the one I want to look at is all the way up top. That is a beautiful Gerber daisy gorgeous. It just says pink. I don't know about that. They're just so happy and cheery. I'm not going to get it. The Gerber daisies, you know, they're beautiful in the spring when we have the cooler weather and then they just kind of hang out until fall. Sometimes they'll bloom again, but not always. It varies so much from season to season, from year to year, I mean. Oh gosh, I just poured dirt all over myself. Ooh, although I do have a spring planter I need to do and I keep forgetting about it. Maybe I should grab the stuff to throw that together while I'm here. All right, so this one's growth is a little bit wonky, but I like those flowers more than the others. Maybe I should go with, oh, wait a minute. 298, I, I think I'm going this direction. Ooh, you know I'm a sucker for creeping Jenny in a six pack. I don't need this. Got some nice six packs of these Semper Vivums too, which I actually like those I really do not need. Not right now. I have a project I'm working on, but um, I don't need to get the stuff for it just yet. It's still going to be a minute. They're very full, though. Do they look nice? Okay, so I really <laughs> want one of these, but I can't, I can't reach it. Okay, I managed to just barely... Sorry about the beeping. I did manage to just barely get one, but it's not the one I want. This is the, uh, the Violet Riot. <laughs> Violet Riot, Violet Riot Color Spires Salvia. These are beautiful. You know what though? If these don't get 
full full sun in my experience i don't know about this one specifically but just salvia in general they tend to like lay down and not look so hot and my sun is not that reliable it shifts a lot throughout the year because of the trees and the angles and everything and like you know the earth how it tilts and whatnot maybe i shouldn't I have a you know what though i do the, i have a planter in the front yard i've been wanting to put these in so i think that that's good this will work oh there's so many more yeah no i still haven't picked out the things for the spring planter there's just so much to look at and i'm having a very indecisive day you know there are just some days where more decisive than others i'm really liking these six packs with the coleus you get a few different ones to choose from in here it's nice to just be able to get that sort of variety 798 that's not too bad and those that's a good color combo and they have multiples to choose from too and they do look like they're paired up fairly well color wise yeah see them all down there so if you're looking to like mix and match things up that's really probably a nice convenient way to go oh. Oh, these are adorable. Do any of their flowers opened? These are supposed to be a really tough ground cover. I can't remember what the common name. There's its name right there. It's cute. Called a grass replacement. I guess that means it's like what they call a, a steppable, maybe? No, don't take my word for it. I'm not saying go walking around on top of your plants. Maybe like good for erosion control. They're nice and tight. Oh, look at this. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, something smells amazing over here. I know it's not the geraniums, but it, what would that be? Oh, <laughs> duh, right in front of me. Lavender, and they're untouchable. Can't get to them. Man, these smell fantastic. <laughs> it's the elegance purple lavender. I can't, I can't get to it. <laughs> there we go. Pull that plastic down. Let's see what your hardiness is. It's an ingus to so it should be fairly hardy. All right, so zones five and up. That's pretty good. I really love this. I am so picky with lavender, but I'm telling you, the smell that I'm getting from these is just like out of this world. And I know sometimes time of day can play a role in that, but it's like early afternoon and that's when my other lavenders that I've tried usually don't have any smell at all. It's when it starts to kind of like fade away in the heat of the day when I don't notice it as much. There's also like a thousand of them over here, right? I mean, there's so many, but maybe I, maybe I can just I can just get one, right? Look at all the pretty ferns. These are ostrich ferns. What variety of ostrich fern? Oh, the king. That's a cup plant. It's very windy. The king. I've been trying to find these for a long time. And there's why. Three to five feet high. The king's supposed to get a lot bigger. Look at them. It's a great price. $7.98. Okay, the pot's nice and firm. There's lots of growth in there. It is it is getting very, very warm. So this is what I'm typically looking for when picking these out. You see this? That pot's very well filled out. I cannot catch a break with the background noise. I don't need the slug. That can stay. But yeah, see that? So this is rooted out really well. These are a spreader. They spread very, very well. Okay, and they have a ton of these regal red Japanese painted ferns, which I have bad luck with. I know a lot of people out there really like them, so I thought I'd just kind of show them to you. So there's that tag, and that beautiful, lovely foliage. Oh, and I put that creeping Jenny back. I decided I only need one, so I'm gonna buy a six pack. I don't, I know these are really popular, these red rooster Carex, but the, why? I can see it in the fall time, or maybe like, maybe a goth garden or something. I don't, I don't get it. Doesn't mean it, it doesn't make sense. Everyone's allowed to have their preferences, but I just, it looks dead. I love the mouse ears. Hostas. This is the Mighty Mouse Ears. It's a little variegation. Aren't they cute? I have just the regular ones down here too. It is so loud. I'm so sorry. Just something adorable about those. I think it's the cute little folds. The foliage is kind of stiff on them. Just cute tiny little baby hostas. Wow, that's a nice setup. Look at this Unanimous. It's beautiful. Unanimous, sorry. It's not too bad for what that is. And the thing's huge. It's gorgeous. Why? I mean, I guess I'm being a little bit harsh. I can think of some ways that this would look kind of cool, especially in like a rock garden. That, that would make sense. Oh, look at all them sucks. Oh, and they got all the chick charms over there. I love those. These airplanes. <laughs> I surrender. I give up. It's just, it's just noisy at this point. What can I do about it? Wow. That is gorgeous. This is a, what are you? The Katsura Paris beautiful. What are your guys' thoughts on the Nandinas? 
I really like the Twilight. I planted these for people before, and they seem to like them. They have, like, a nice moderate growth. They're a pretty tough, sturdy plant, but sometimes they look a little bit, like, weedy. They get a little bit unruly, but I suppose that that's the appeal, right? And the, that color, the color on the new growth is beautiful, especially when the temperatures are a lot cooler. So, then Burger King! They got the Impossible Burger! Just past a random sign that said HPV joint pain. Like, it was just on the side of the road, not next to any building. Like, what? Why? It's no phone number? Nothing. Just said HPV joint pain. Is that a thing? I didn't know. I didn't know that that was... I mean, I guess it makes sense. It's a virus, which would, you know, can collect in joints and cause inflammation. And I don't know. I don't have any joint pains. So I guess I don't really... I don't have HP. Well, I guess I could. You can't really check for that in men unless you have an outbreak. What's happening? I feel like I'm suddenly divulging too much. We went from Lowe's, looking at plants, half a second of Burger King, and now HPV. <laughs> so, <laughs> welcome to my channel. The sky is, like, not pretty, but gorgeous at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Like, the clouds have these fun little tufts to them. So, something that annoys me, this person, they're not really doing it, but sometimes when somebody, like, misses their turn or whatnot, they just don't get into the right lane, they'll just block traffic. That really drives me crazy. That is so rude, just because you decided you shouldn't have to just drive a little further and turn around, everybody else should have to be held up because of you? I don't think so. If you do that, stop it. Just keep going, turn around, everything will be okay, just because you missed your turn. Not the end of the world. Don't gotta hold everybody else up because of it, though. That doesn't make any sense. Like I said, though, that person that I was just pointing to who was in front of me a second ago, they weren't doing that. It just kind of reminded me because somebody did that earlier and I missed, like, I had to sit through two lights that I wouldn't have had to otherwise. And I was like, why would you do that? Why would you hold up traffic because of that? That's just rude. Look at how pretty. There's so much pretty. Guys, it is gorgeous. Spring has peaked. The crab apples, the cherries... The Bradford pears went out of flower very quickly. Like, all these down here, those were normally covered in white flowers. But it's still, it's just so colorful and making me very, very, very happy. Look at, it's so pretty. Isn't that pretty? All right, so, see here? Yeah, here's a little example, almost, of what I was talking about. Like, you couldn't just get over sooner what's going on there that wasn't so bad I swear i don't have road rage <laughs> like i said that wasn't that bad it's just sometimes some people it's like come on now okay that's enough of all of that gonna go ahead head home now should be there in just a minute not that like that doesn't matter to anybody here and that we can look at the plants i picked up and talk a little bit about those ferns hey finally seeing some blue up there it is so windy there could be some audio issues here i'm apologizing in advance I don't really need to do, like, a haul on this, do I? You guys pretty much saw everything I got. I did grab a Gerber Daisy that I, I found one that I thought was really cute. And a geranium, so the, I guess you didn't see that. And then these guys up here, the Silver Star Helichrysum. These are wonderful trailers. Really pretty. They sometimes, like, get a little bit unruly, but there's just something about them that I do enjoy. But otherwise, you saw everything. The ferns, the lavender I picked out, and then the salvia back here. So that's all good. The, that's not... That's not for me. That's a birthday present for my brother-in-law. He loves the captain. Not that there's... I'm grown. So if it was for me, that's all right. It's okay. No big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and place these out. Set this one down here. It's the last one. So here's the plan. I have this berm here. Lovely berm. Very um, needy. Needs a lot of work. I've talked about this before, how I'm trying to find something to plant up here in the middle that'll get nice and tall to provide some privacy that will be evergreen. And I'm just like having trouble making up my mind, being indecisive with it. But I know that with these ferns, imagine them being down probably about, I'd say maybe another foot probably to 18 inches. So they're kind of planted on the slope here. Those are going to get, like it said on the tag, three to five feet tall. Now ostrich ferns can take a decent amount of sun and they are spreaders, like almost a little bit too aggressively. And I think that that's going to look nice because I have these pedicits here, pedicits japonicus, the variegated ones. These also are an aggressive spreader. They're going to fill this berm out completely eventually. This is about as tall as they get. They don't get much bigger than that. They do fantastic with like some morning sun, dappled afternoon shade, and they are luminous. Something about them, they just kind of light up at nighttime. I mean, not something about them, it's the variegation. That's why they do that. But I like that for this area. 
It's still gonna be a while until they fill things out, but I'm fine with this being almost like a ground cover for the whole thing. And I'm gonna like how that, I need to cut this hydrangea back. Uh, I'm really gonna like how that's going to look when in a few years when these are covering pretty much the whole berm with nice three to five foot tall. I doubt they'll get five foot tall here. That's probably in more of a cool, more like mild climate. But having these big ferns up above those, that's gonna look really pretty. It's these pedicets, this is, I originally planted four of them and that was about three years ago. And this is what they've done so far. They've spread out a lot all over the place. I didn't really want them over here, but I mean, that's what they're going to do. Eventually they'll even probably go up this hill. I'm thinking about landscaping this hill Maybe not this year, I don't know. That stump still needs to get removed, but maybe putting like a hedge of boxwoods along the fence line and then putting just a line of mulch that'll kind of curve around right here and come up and then just do like something very simple up in this area because the grass really doesn't grow great up there. It's just sort of like a nonsense area. It's just, I don't know. It, I just think it would look nicer to have something going on up here and to just kind of bring this up that hill, but that's for another time. For now, I'm really excited about these ostrich ferns. Like I said, imagine them down on the slope a little bit further, and then overall the idea someday is to have these pedicets intertwined through everything, the ostrich ferns that have that nice, almost a lime green color coming up above everything. That's gonna be so pretty. And like I said, I still don't know what I'm gonna plant as the tall evergreen hedge back here, because lighting here is very tricky. So with the way the trees have grown and everything, it used to get a lot of sun. This originally had big beautiful crepe myrtles in it and then didn't get enough sun for those they started getting scraggly and uh, I filled it with bananas and they were okay when bananas have like just their like a sweet spot of light they get huge because they stretch a little bit and those were beautiful there was usually like a 10 foot wall of bananas here every year and I loved it but now there's like nowhere near enough light for the bananas anymore they just I've tried the last few years they don't get very big so uh, I think this will be the way to go but as far as picking up the evergreen hedge to put back here. I'm still on the fence. We've talked about bamboo. I just, with the proximity to the pool, I don't know if I want to go with bamboo. It's really messy and I would need to put a barrier around it and I don't know if I feel like doing that. I do want to plant some bamboo this year, but I want to probably containerize it somewhere. Probably not just like a big loose hedge and that's not going to work with the ferns and the, like everything's just going to get lost in the bamboo if I do that. I, I may even just go with like a wall of holly because the problem is whatever goes here needs to get really tall because I would like for it to block like everything that my hand is showing, like all of that. I basically wanna feel like I don't have neighbors. I love my neighbors. If anybody watches this, I love y'all. But it's just it's just nice to have that kind of privacy and you can't have privacy fences in this neighborhood. So something tall, but not huge. Still, there's a lot of options, but it has to be something that doesn't like a ton of sun during the summertime and can take scorching, scorching sun during the winter time when there's no leaves on these trees to shade them. And you know, boxwoods don't get tall enough, so that's not gonna be an option. There are some varieties of holly I could maybe try and look into those, that might be all right. I mean, just like a wall of magnolias would be gorgeous, but those get gigantic. And I don't think there's enough sun here during the summertime for them. I don't, not that, it, there's not. There's nowhere near enough sun here in the summertime for them. Those Euonymus I threw back there because I got them super cheap a few years ago and I was like, hey, it's something, you know, maybe if I never find what I want to use, those are the Euonymus right there then maybe that'll eventually form a hedge, but it's not going to probably get tall enough anytime soon. So that's what that's why those are there. I'm really excited about grabbing these ferns. I'm not gonna plant them yet. I need to pick up some things because I like to amend the soil a lot when I do the plantings with these. So I like to make sure it's nice and loose, put um, probably some holly tone in there a little bit and make it nice and organic. And I haven't gathered my supplies yet for stuff like that, but this is, the idea here. What do you think? And then here are my other ostrich ferns, which I talked about before. These are stuck in this tree. Pull this out. That's been bugging me for a long time. All I gotta do is reach in here and rip them out. There we go. So these are just the regular ostrich ferns and they have, this is just from like a few roots. Filled this out very nicely. The problem is they scorch in the afternoon sun when it gets really hot out. And the regular ones, these usually get like, I'd say maybe up to two feet tall every year. And they're beautiful. But I think the king is going to be even better because three to five feet tall. I mean, just great big ostrich plumey type ferns. It's going to be beautiful. Oh, it looks like, can you see it? Crinum lilies, come, not the crinum, crinum lilies right here. This is a Hedicium coronorium, just the white butterfly ginger. That's coming up, which is really exciting. We had such a bad winter. I wasn't sure how that was going to do. 
They don't usually come up this early, so that's this is a very warm spot here, though. And in fact, oh, look at that. Bananas coming up, too. Got a nice big nub of banana shooting up there. I wonder if they're coming out of the other bird. Every year we have these bad winters, and you just never know. Oh, look at that. Banana. Awesome. So we had two nights where it, one was like negative 8 Fahrenheit, and another one was minus 13. So like, I wasn't sure, but these bajus are pretty tough, so I'm really happy about it, especially that they didn't die down to the ground. They they still maintain a little bit of trunk because that just they get so much bigger faster that way. I gotta say, it's about time to bring the plants out. Like, we're just about there. This is the uh, Poncirus trifoliate. Starting to flower, smells amazing, very citrusy and lovely. The common name is the Flying Dragon Japanese Bitter Orange. I don't know what happened. We're not doing a garden tour. It's not what's happening right now. Yeah, I think the video is long enough. I don't need to do that right now. Look at how these are like all crooked from, I assume that's just from shipping. Those should straighten back out. Yeah, they'll probably straighten back out. But yeah, it is time. I'm not seeing any lows that look like it looks like it should be above 45 most nights. So I can start bringing the plants out and start getting these grasses cleaned up and unearthing the bananas and get things going. I'm really excited about that. Like, I cannot wait. I do need to be kind of patient when it comes to moving the plants out, though, just because, like, they need shade, which I think I talked about earlier. The leaves aren't quite out on the trees yet, but I really want to. Like, I really want to bring them out, but I'm going to try and wait just, like, one more week. So that might be a next weekend's vlog, maybe. Yeah, you know, I feel like it's probably time to wrap this up. I don't want things to get too lengthy, and if I start moving on to other projects, it'll get even longer. So I hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you're having a great day. That got kind of wonky from the wind, didn't it? Great life, and, you know, that everything's just going wonderfully for you. And don't forget to like the video. It makes a big difference. I do appreciate it, and subscribe as well, and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos come out. Oh, you are dusty. There's, like, a layer of pollen all over the foliage on this. You see that? Look at that. Poor thing. Getting smothered. Okay, I got excited. I started moving the plants out. Impulse control, not my thing today. The trunk on this spindle palm is starting to look really pretty. That's it, though. Just the spindle palm. And that's because the spike on it, which you can't really see. I've leaned it into this tree on purpose to help stabilize it. But this is, it was growing into the ceiling. So I was like, you know what? I don't want this leaf to come out all wonky like the other ones did because of that. So I thought I'd go ahead and bring it out and just... Bring just, just this one. No more. Just this one. I'll bring the rest out next week. Most of them. Uh, like I said, I hope everybody's doing well and just everything in life's going great for you. As always and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.